Are we up and running? I think we should be. Eight o'clock. Testing, testing. Audio seems okay. Green's okay. Good morning, everybody. Little bags up there. That tells me it's a Monday. It's the first or the third Monday in the month, the day when we put out the little bits of garbage that don't fit any other category. Non-burnable, non-recyclable, all that kind of stuff. So what will be in those little white bags, it'll be things like... Uh, broken crockery or batteries or stuff like that. The main pickup for us twice a week is burnable stuff. And then there's a pickup for recyclable stuff, which is cardboard, bottles, cans, all that kind of thing. And then first and third Monday are the leftover little things. If we have larger garbage objects, we have to call City Hall, arrange a pickup. We pay a fee and they come and pick up your chair or whatever it is you're trying to throw away. The beer barrel should change every stream. I guess it changes every day, I guess. The, the, beer, the bars and restaurants here are pretty busy. So I'm saying, what's the building across the street with the huge black entrance? I'm not sure what you mean. The black entrance. The, on the right-hand side, the one with the shutter closed, that's the bag lady. She sells little handbags. Then there's an alley beside her. Then next to that is the ninja experience. Next to that's a little bar, and then the blue one is the whale restaurant. Next to that's a coffee shop, the Brick Arch coffee shop. Then next to that is a restaurant. It's a, from, a surf and turf, from sea to mountain restaurant. Today's work, today's work, today's work. Uh, I think what we'll do today is we'll do that fixing job. Remember there's a broken block we had? So I think we'll fix that today. The repair job, very simple repair job. It shouldn't take too long, unless, I, unless it gets more complicated than I think it is. It shouldn't take too long. And then we've got another new job that has interrupted our stream. We're going to have some tracing today, I think, on the iPad. I'm not sure. We'll see how we get to use the, the time. And then show and tell. Oh my God, show and tell. We have book three of that album we've been going through but I also have another fat package that arrived last night. I have one, two, three, four, five unopened packages. And we got in the post yesterday a very special package from one of our printers, Chiharu-san. Do you recognize what this might be going by the size and the thickness? We should probably open that. 59 or 60 people will be very, very, very happy to see that one. Let's get to work. General Zimmer, throw the man a chocolate egg. He's got it. Let's clean up some of this stuff first so we can get going. Today we've got some stuff to check. Um, I won't be checking them on stream. These came in. This came in from Tsushima-san. She's our last printer working in Ome. The group of printers who set up in Ome back in 2011, whenever it was, 13 years ago. Tsushima-san is still working there. The other printers were people who lived in Tokyo, so they were commuting to Ome. So when we moved to Tokyo, those people print here. Tsushima-san doesn't want to commute here. It would be silly. So she still works in the old Ome workshop. She's just done a bunch of Ukiwe Heroes prints. And this one, this came in from Mr. K. Mr. K, another batch of ramen cats. This is the third. This is nothing to do with our eight cats series. This is the ramen cats. We have three, sushi, hanami, and ramen cats and it's hard to keep them in stock they are doing very very well jed really uh, hit a winner there hit a home run with that series those actually we can't sell those just yet they will have to go out to jed for signing they will come back to us and then out they go he will keep some for selling through his own website this is uh it's an application form i have to fill in nothing secret here those of you who can read japanese Oh, that reminds me, this is happening next Monday. 
We're here Monday today. There will be a stream on Thursday, a stream on Saturday. Next Monday, we are going to have a break. I'm sorry, just a one-day break. I had no way to, to change this. I'm going to dry dock Monday and Tuesday next week. Literally, dry dock. In Japan, they call it ningen doku, a human dry dock. It's when you go to a hospital, they close the door, pump out the water and have a look at you and repaint the bottom surface or whatever. It's a medical health checkup and it's going to take me two days. And in Japanese it's called Ningen Doku and that's what this is. And this is the, uh, I put the application in a couple of weeks ago, just at the time I got back from Canada. And the only two days they had available uh, within the next month or so were uh, March the 11th and 12th. That's next Monday and Tuesday. And there's no way they're going to let me stream from my hospital room over there, nor do I want to. So it's an exam. It's an exam. They're going to put a camera down the top and a camera up the bottom and a camera in the front and then x-rays, x-rays this way, that way, blood work, the whole thing. It's pages and pages and pages, the application form to do this. They're going to check pretty much everything that can be checked. I'm not going because I think i got a problem. I'm going just because I'm 72 years old and I haven't been checked for quite a while. And it's kind of cool to get this full run up. Yep, they're going to scrape the barnacles off my bottom. So, exactly. That's what they call it. Ningen dry dock. I don't Ningen doku. Anyway, so that's happening next Monday. So, there will be no stream next Monday. And the, the, there's little plastic bottles and stuff in here. We don't need to get too graphic about this. But because the thing starts on Monday, starting on the Thursday before that, I have to start taking samples. They want a sample Thursday, uh, two days, Friday, Saturday. They want another sample Saturday. Uh, they want another sample uh, Sunday, Monday. They will take samples when I get there. So they're going to take three days of samples of the different kinds of things that come out of my body. <laughs> so, too much information. Okay, let's have a look at that broken block and see how we can fix it. Funny, you know, talking about that medical check, you know, back when I was younger, when I lived in, in Hamra and in Ome, there was a five-year system in place, and this must still be running in Japan. I don't, it was when I was 50 and 55 and 60 and then 65. I got this package, a letter from the city office saying, hey, you've hit a milestone 5555, five, 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 whatever. We recommend you get a checkup and here the city office will pay half the cost and stuff like that. Those things came regularly. Maybe they started earlier, maybe when I was 45. I don't remember exactly. And that was a more casual check. They just said, here, here's your, your, your coupon for this. Go to one of these following clinics and do a, do a, a, a run-up and a check-over, whatever. And I used to do those. And then they stopped coming when I was 65. I guess, uh, I don't know the, the national medical rule about this, but those requests for checkups and stuff stopped coming when I hit 65. And I guess maybe they don't do it for uh, senior citizens. Maybe they're worried of finding too many problems or something. I don't know. Here we are, here's the broken block. So this is now, it'll be like seven years or something since I've had one of these checks. So I'm quite happy to go and do this. It's not going to be comfortable, but uh, hey, whatever. Okay, here we are. This is the block for... This print, we saw this to show, do you remember? This is the print, it's in our catalog. It's a reproduction of a Hasui print, uh, Hiraizumi. It's a temple up in, uh, oh, up north in Tohoku. Is it Aomori? I'm not sure exactly. It might be Akita Prefecture, I don't remember. It's a famous, famous temple. Hasui did a number of images of this, a large Oban, a different one, a different. And this is one of his postcard prints. The original is pre-war. We carved our own reproduction because his work is now in the public domain. And those of you who are watching the stream a few days a few days ago last week, you saw me talk about this. Kubota-san, our top gun, absolute perfect printer, somehow managed 
to drop something on this block or drop the block itself or, or something and he has damaged it and it's unprintable unprintable so what we're going to do we need to just simply put a piece of wood in there and there's different ways we can do this usually when there's a, a, a single point of failure here what i do is a, there's a really simple trick to this if this thing was for example only that long if one of those spots was broken off what I would do is go upstairs, get a drill, and just zzz, just drill a little round hole in there. And then it's easy then. You make a shim of wood, you just get a piece of extra cherry wood that's from your desk somewhere. You, you just sand it round, bung it in the hole, and you're good to go. But there's no way. This is too long. Look at the size of this. Here's my fingernail. I would have to cut a hole this big. So there's no way we would use a hole in this one. It's long and thin, and it's right along the wood grain. So what I'm going to do is simple. I'm going to get my knife. Oops, I think we're zoomed in a bit too close here. I'm going to get my, my normal carving knife and a couple of chisels, and I'm going to excavate a little bit. Excavate, dig it out, and clean up the sides. There's one place on the side of this where it's beveled, it's been banged. So I've got to take away that part too. So I'm going to clean a little valley. It's hard to explain when I'm zoomed out. I'm going to take the knife, dig in and dig in, and make it into just a little valley. Then I will get a piece of cherry wood, shape something that has a V-type shape, pop it in there, and we should be good to go. And we won't be using, we're not going to like fill this with wood putty or something like that. There's no way that would be an adequate solution. One is it's not long-lasting, uh, and two, uh, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't print the same. We need a piece of cherry wood in there so that when we're printing it, the image uh, has the same, you know, the same type of impression. If I put some putty or epoxy or something in there, that would be too hard. It wouldn't absorb water and we'd be able to see the repaired place. So I'm saying you're coming to Japan in July. Will I be around? Depends on how that medical checkup goes. <laughs> yeah, I'll be here. We are going to probably somewhere over the next couple of months, we will maybe be organizing and announcing a schedule for Dave. As I talked about in that last video, I'm getting uh, overwhelmed by work and by visitors. And it's perhaps time to build a public schedule where if people actually do want to come and chat, we have to say Dave's available on this day and this day. And it's looking at the moment. This, don't quote me on this because this is not decided whatsoever. But it's looking like it's going to be weekends. Dave is going to say he will be here in the weekends, always in the shop. Other days, you take your chances. That's probably the way it's going to end up. Don't know yet. I don't know. What did he do? I have no idea looking at this crack, trying to tell what actually hit it. Crazy. Take that out. I think we'll go right to the end here. These are knocked off at an angle too. We're gonna have to open this up quite a ways here.
Now, I'll never find out actually how he did this because the next time I see him, he's going to ask me, have you fixed it? And I'll say, yeah, I fixed it. But if I try and drill him too much, like, what, is that? what actually happened? What's going on? What did you do? You know, it would be too much, uh, too intrusive, too much like the third degree, you know. So I really can't, uh, I really won't be able to talk to him too much about this. It doesn't matter. It's not like I've never done this myself, you know. I've smacked some blocks too, of course. Also, too, thinking about this, uh, it, part of the decision is what I'm doing now is how invisible does this have to be? You know, if this was some block where this was a woman's face and the lines were all delicate and stuff, you've got to really try and make it invisible. This is a staircase in the middle of a postcard print, so there's no way. And when we get to the end of this this morning and we look at it, you will, I think, you'll be able to see where this repair was done. But uh, we're not doing an invisible mending here. Just going to try and get it reasonable. I was saying, do my hands get sore? Can't say so, no. Remember too though, I know these days, I know I, I, very, I don't like do this eight hours in a row. Today I'll be doing this for like an hour and something. So I'm not in a position where I'm working many, 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 many long hours on this these days. But back when I was younger and when I was, I can't really say that, I know. Well, it would get sore if I was doing persuading or something all day long. You know, you, you bang a hammer all day long, and yeah, you feel it the next morning. What should I do here? But no, I don't have any specific physical problems here. So. Someone says, do I miss the days of being able to choose my own work and having the freedom to carve what you like? Do I miss the old days? Yes, the days when I worked and lived by myself in Ome. Very much, of course, I miss those. But it wasn't a question of choosing the work I like, because I'm still doing that. It was just a daily schedule. 
get up in the morning. I didn't have an alarm clock. It was totally free time. I knew I had to work, and of course I had to do lots and lots of work. I'm going to do this with today. Just, just use this piece of chili, I guess. Let's zoom out a bit more. So I miss the daily freedom, of course I do, absolutely. Now it's a, it sounds a bit silly, now it's a grind, you know. Well, I'm going to split them. No, there's no way. This is very, very small. It's a tiny little piece of wood going in here. There's no way we're going to have any force that would split this block. Absolutely no. But I think I might need to go a bit deeper. It's not going to be enough for the hole. Let me dig a bit deeper on part of this. If it doesn't go deep enough, there's not going to be enough wood to hold the thing in place.
It's rocking somewhere. There's a part that's too thick somewhere. It's not enough. It's not deep enough to stay by itself. We'll need to glue it in there, but uh, it's okay. It's still rocking somewhere. Can you see what we're doing? This piece can fit in the slot there. It's still bumping on something. There's something in the hole or on the thing itself. It's still bumping up. Oh, it's here. It's bumping on the back. I think it's kind of like watching a dentist at work, is it? Is this the kind of thing that maybe dentists do? Whatever, they put these pieces inside your teeth, I don't know. Mm, it doesn't rock. Good, good, good.
Okay, give it a few minutes. Okay, we've got a saw. Well, we have to leave it to dry for a few minutes. Come back in 10 or 15 minutes. We've got a saw that has no, uh, what's the word? There's no set on the saw. The teeth don't split out side by side. So in a minute, we'll come back. We'll cut this off. And the saw actually can scrape along the wood surface, and it doesn't matter because there's no tea, there's no set on the teeth on this saw. So let's put this aside for a few minutes, go back and do some other work. Where do I put it? We'll come back in a few minutes. <coughs> Running a saw over a finished block. Well, it's like that. You can see, look, nothing at all. It's absolutely flat. I don't know what it's called, I'm sorry, I don't know. Does somebody got a name for that? We're not finished. We will first we will flush cut it, then we will cut the shape of the wood and any little bits of glue remnant there, of course, they will come out as I do the carving. There's no no problem there. So I put a dab of glue in there, yes. This is not that's a really shallow V there. This a, you, you saw me cut the V and then put a piece of wood in, and there's no way that that wood will stay by itself. If it was a smaller little thing and I was driving a shim in, we get a deeper cut like this, the shim will go in and we don't need glue because the water will hold it in place. But with a, a long trough like you saw there, there's no way that piece of wood would sit there by itself. And there's a limit to how much I can excavate, 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 excavate to leave me enough that that shim would say would would stick. So it's much easier just to put a piece of glue in. It's not a question of pride. Real woodworkers would never use glue. I mean, I'm sorry, please. Who is this outside? Is this our, uh, no, it's not our, is it our cold hot towel people? No. Yes, no. I don't remember. It looks like maybe it's a delivery for the construction of the restaurant there. Okay, while we're waiting for that to dry, Let's open this package. This is not an official show and tell, but whatever. Let's have a look at these prints. I'm sure there are many people out there who are interested. And actually, it gives us one more chance. I have next to me, somewhere in the pile of things here, I have some great wave prints. And I have one of the earliest great wave prints that we made is right next to me here. So this will give us a chance, yet one more time, to compare the oldest printings with the newest printings. Tell. We have so many prints here right now. There's a few things happening all at the same time. We've been lucky, the dealer auctions and stuff like this. We actually managed to score a bunch of really interesting prints recently. I myself have been really, really carefully going through all the auctions I can find because the next couple of months for us, March, April, we're going to have such a flood of people here. And we are out, out of stock of most of our, many of our popular prints. So if I don't buy a ton of stuff over these next few weeks, we're going to be in trouble in the next couple of months. So there's packages all around me here. As far as ideas for prints, we are absolutely, we're booked up now for print ideas now and the schedule for making prints. We are booked up now through the end of 2025. I don't have all the drawings ready, but we know what we are doing. We know what we are capable of and we're booked to the end of 2025. The Hokusai series, of course, the Kyoto Journey series, they will take 2024. The series that will follow that, which is kind of decided already, will fill up 2025. We have a number of independent projects, things like the Surfer Girl and stuff like this. We're booked.
We get requests all the time. Just yesterday in the shop, you know, uh, a gentleman came up. He said, you know, I've got a real way I can help you. You guys are trying to, trying to uh, preserve traditional printmaking. He said, I want to help. I've got to really help. I've got an idea. Here's what you want to do. I'll design this for you. and We can do this and we can do this. And I'm sitting listening to him. He was really friendly. He had good ideas as it was, but he doesn't know our backstory. He was just trying to think, he, with an idea, this will be a dynamite idea, and that will revolutionize woodbot printmaking. He didn't really realize the situation that we are, you know, actually sort of doing okay, and uh, had nine views of cats, yeah. <laughs> well, cats too, I mean, when I said, we're booked with the subscription prints to the end of 2026, then in and among the subscription prints are other jobs. The Surfer Girl, uh, the Kamakura print that's now started, the Manazuru Port, the next four in the eight views of cats. I didn't list everything, but the point being we are booked. Has the 25, 2025 series been announced? No, it will not be announced until December this year. Don't even wait. I'm not teasing you. This, that's the way we do this. We are going to work in the background, getting things ready, getting the first print made. You'll see probably some of the carving on this stream come September, or maybe even earlier. But there will be no announcement of the series on a sign-up or anything until December. I'm sorry. How many are we up to now? Let me get out to my uh, browser a second. How many are we up to here? One second, please. Local Hong Kong manager system, inventory, print history. One sec. This is item number 293. Okay, 293. Where am I? Just I can't find it. Okay, actually sold copies, not counting the Kickstarter, 2,423 copies have sold. The Kickstarter was, how many was that? That was just nearly 300, so that's 24, 25, 26, that's 2,700 copies have sold. Then in addition to that, we've had test printing, test printing, test printing. Upstairs, I've got 400 copies of rejected prints. So that puts us at about 3,300 copies somewhere now. Let's find, I told you a minute ago, I've got an older copy here. Let me grab it. Here we are. Okay, this is a different printer. So the print looks a bit different. The sky color is different, but we can see lines and stuff. This is 20. Well, here we are. This is 2015 Kubota. So here we are, 2015 on the top, and the new one we've just received right now, printed a few days ago. Can we get some close-ups side by side? Remember, these are different printers. So they've got a bit of a different color formulation. What we're looking at here is block wear and tear. How do we do this? Okay, if I zoom in really, really close, we can't see both, but let's do it this way. Let's take these guys on this boat. And we'll give an A, B, A, B, A, B. Okay, there's the guys in the boat. And what we want to look at are things like this. The little, uh, the things here, like this. The little straw the guy's face, the jaggedness of this lines, the, some of the, the shape of the foam. And let me do an AB. That's the one that was just printed. Here's the one from 2015. I'll just go back and forth bit by bit so you can have a look at these. I can't study this while I'm doing this. So here we are, 2015, 2024. 
I'll go back and forth while you look at different places. Look at the foam, look at this, look at that. This is 2015. 2024. 2015. Let's go to a different place, do the same thing. Let's go to the little men over on the other side. Okay, this is 2015. 2024. We've got the, the thin lines on the oars. We've got this line here, the thin line here. The, the line itself, that's 2024. Here we go, this is 2015. I'm not going to pretend there are no differences at all. Look at this, how sharp that is. And I don't think it's that sharp anymore. Here we are. It has changed. It has changed. Look at this. We have some differences here, I think. Look at that. Here we are. 2015, pretty sharp, pretty clean. 2024, there are differences. This is getting worn. I'm not going to pretend there's no wear at all. But is this block in a condition that I won't sell it anymore? Give me a break. This is fine. Let's go to one down here. How about this? Here we are. Here's another one. These places really wear out easily. Let's put it where we can get some foam as well. Here we are. And there's some foam. And the famous little place where the little dot was left inside the foam, we reproduced that. This is the 20, 2024 version. Here is 2015. The thin lines here. So I think we're okay, you know. Uh, one more thing to check. I uh, know the the Itabokashi. This is another place that wears out a lot in any print. Let's find a place here. One sec. You know Itabokashi, where we put a gradation on the block itself. Here. This one here. Look at these. These areas, the bottom areas are sharp, cut clean. The top areas are fuzzy. This is Itabokashi, block gradation. And in most of the reproduction companies, even Adachi, they don't even bother. The original prints had this. They were fuzzy on top, sharp at the bottom. Most modern reproductions are not. We have tried to replicate the old one. Okay, here we go. This is 2024. And this kind of stuff wears out really, really quickly. And here is 2015. I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this. I think we're okay. We are so far from retiring these blocks that I cannot even see where the end will come. I cannot even imagine how it's going to come. Thirty, thirty, whatever, 3,500 copies printed or something like that. Over 6,000 people currently on the waiting list. <laughs> There's no way. I, there's no way I can pretend that all 6,000 of those people are going to get a print from this block set. There's no way I can say that. We're making them 60 at a time. This is Chiharu-san. Out of the 60 sheets I sent her, let's see, she usually puts a flag on about Yare. Here we are. She's got one, two, three, four, five. She has claimed that five of these are probably not suitable for selling. Let's have a look at what she has said. These are the ones she has discounted. And maybe it's a... She, here we are. Okay, there's one here. We may be actually able to save this. Oops. No, we do 60 every six weeks. 
we would do more, the blocks would do more. We could do 60 every few weeks, but we just don't have the printing staff. Chiarizan doesn't want to become a full-time great wave printer. No way. There's a blue dot, and this is printer's mistake. There must have been a blue dot of pigment somewhere on her bench. Now maybe I can get that out with my microscope. And if it doesn't leave a visible dot, this one will be good to go. So she's put it in her reject group at the moment because it's, because it's rejected. What else? Oh yeah, look at this. We've got another one. I won't be able to fix this. Pull out, push in. Here we are, doing the gradation on the sky. She had a little bit of crap in her brush. And when she was doing the gradation here, rubbing the brush back and forth, back and forth, there was a little bit of black pigment somewhere and it slid. And there's no way I can surgically remove that without leaving a mark. So this gets rejected, but we don't throw it away. It's going to get rejected and go into the pile upstairs on my desk and somewhere in the future when, you know, when it has become a real antique, nobody will care about that. But we can't sell a car with a scratch on the door. You just don't do that. Here's another one. This is her. Actually, these, I should, I'm sorry not to embarrass her by this, but these are printer errors. Blue pigment. I might be able to surgically remove that one too. You can feel her frustration too, you know, it's all printed, everything is done, then she goes bang to do that last gradation and there's a blue dot in the sky. Okay, this is, uh, no, reject. this is an early one. She's getting warmed up. Her blocks are getting warmed up. This would be number one or two in the stack. She hasn't got the balance correct for the paste and we can see uh, blurriness in the gradation. So this is just a warm up copy. But no, again, we can't sell it. And look at this. A little bit of a slip up. And there's no way I can, uh, I can fix that. There's no way. Is that five? No, that's four. One more, can I? What was the other one? I'm not trying to embarrass her about this. You know, there's no way I could do as well as she's done on this. Absolutely no way. If I tried to do 60 of these now, we'd end up with 30 good copies. I could not do work at the level she's doing. There's no way. I don't see what's wrong with this one right away. There must be something. Anybody catch it? Oh, I see it. Look at this, my God. The cartouche, it must have slipped while she was printing the cartouche. Can we see this? If we zoom in here, just let me zoom in. Here's a nice copy. Look at the lines on the edge of the cartouche, crisp and clear. This one's doubled. This is really, really rare. She was probably asleep at the wheel when she did this batch. You can, look at you can see the lines are thick and it's actually, it's blurred. So she's put the paper on place, hit it with the baron, and the paper moved just a smidgen, and oops, oops, so we get a double impression here that is on, but just a tiny, tiny bit off. It's like if, when I look at it, when I take my glasses off. Or maybe what she did, I'm trying to guess here, maybe she printed the cartouche once, and maybe uh, the pigment wasn't quite smoothed out properly, and maybe it was a bit weak on the edge or something. So she thought, can I get it back in the same place exactly twice, put the pigment on, try to print it, and it was missing by like 0.01 of a millimeter. So she's honest, bingo, rejected. How many of the customers would see that or notice it? Doesn't matter, whatever. If we notice it, out it goes. But again, we're not going to throw this away. We will not sell this, absolutely not. It just goes in the pile, and at some future date, when I'm long dead and buried, they will be antique enough that those little defects will just be a point of interest. So my great-great-great-grandchildren or something, whatever, I don't know. There we go.
Okay, so I sent 60 sheets, so it looks like we'll have 55. I will be going through them, of course, to check. I have to do chidi removal, but we'll have 55 prints. So when Aino-san comes this morning, if I forget to tell her, you can remind me. When she comes in a few minutes, we can report to her that she can, uh, after I finish counting, I can report to her that she can notify the top 55 people on the waiting list that their print is ready. Now, if you're number 56, you're actually okay, because what happens here, 50, all 55 people will not say yes. There will be people whose email address is no longer valid. There will be some people, unfortunately, who this will go to spam and they will never see it. There are some people who actually no longer want the print. I mean, maybe they put their name on the mailing list such a long time ago that, yeah, no thanks, you know, I would have bought it then, but no, I, I, it's okay, okay. So they just ignore the mail. There are some people who maybe they lost their job and they can't. So they say, can I stay on the list but push me back a little bit? And then there will be people who grab this as fast as they can. But not all 55 will sell. We send letters out, then we wait. I forget what she waits, 10 days or something. Then if, for example, 35 people have bought the print, leaving 20, she sends out 20 more emails to the next people in line. So we're going through bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. And the, the top people now, the people whose mail will get today, when did they join? I don't know that as I sit here, but uh, I can figure this out. In fact, maybe Anusan might remember actually. When she comes in a few minutes, we can ask her. She may know where we are in the list. It could be people that put their name on the list maybe two years ago, two and a half years ago, three years ago. I don't know. She may remember better than I do. I don't know. Okay, what do you think? Can we play with our block? Let's play with our block here. There are people that have, you know, lost their job or something. It can't be helped, you know. So when they put their name on the waiting list, it's not... We don't take money in advance, my God, for something that's going to do this. Now, I bragged before, this saw is really, really nice and smooth and doesn't scratch, but come on, common sense. We don't do that on a block. So we are going to do this with a little bit of protection in place. This is, of course, a Japanese saw. It cuts on the pull stroke. Oh, here she is, here she is, here she is. Ayama-san, how you doing? Good, good. You're looking a little tired. Does, does the walk tire you out here? Or? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. I think I am losing stamina recently, so like, ah. you know, the same distance and the mm. same, you know. Mm. I don't know. Do, you have, do you have a good excuse? <laughs> no, really, I'm like, really, like, I'm not a walk. It was like nothing to me, but like, uh -huh. No, hey, but come on, common sense, don't push this. I mean, please, you know. Yeah, well, like, it's, a, it's a good walk. It just uh, makes me tired, more tired than hmm. I expected. But, you know, yeah, you mean, know, I, you know I what anybody is going to say. It's just so. after, after 20 minutes walk from the station. Like, okay. <sighs> yeah. Well, well an, another way to do this, of course, you could take a subway and get off one station early instead yeah. of walking all the way. People do that. No, you know, I really enjoy the, it. It's okay. just... Uh, you know, it's, all right, but it's a good exercise, but also... Uh, given the condition and everything, all right, yeah, so just, yeah. be, just be careful. It's okay, just a temporary, yeah. you know, fatigue, <laughs> temporary fatigue, and I'll be fine. You mean like a, a couple of years? That a temporary you mean a couple of weeks, or you mean a couple of years? Couple I don't, weeks, so okay. I don't, no, 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 I mean like just 10, 10 minutes fatigue, and then oh, I see, I see, okay, okay. Yeah. So. Mm, whatever, I, I'm not going to say anything about this, but don't push yourself too hard, of course, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy exercise. No, okay, exercise, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Whatever, but but obviously be careful, you know. So, yeah. okay. I know over the weekend a bunch of packages came. I have things after report. Ramen cats arrived, so we're going to have to prepare a, a package for Jed. And then also Chihara san we were talking on stream. Oh yeah. These arrived. I know it looks like there's five not so good ones, and so maybe we're going to have fifty five. Okay. But I haven't counted yet, so just uh, just. That's totally fine. I want to work with the Kitazawa san on Wednesday or something. Okay. Know, and I want to show her how to do. How to do this? Okay, yeah. but so the. The mailing list can move into action, whatever. So. Okay. Um, did you send a paper to Mr. K? Yes, of course. His okay. stuff is gone. Of course, okay. of course, of course. Actually, Takibin was a bit struggling yesterday because of the marathon. And, uh, you know, so it was yesterday here. Yeah, so this place, place was jammed. Whatever. Mr. K's got his stuff. Today, uh, day chance doing dosa. And tomorrow, Kabut.
somebody just added their name to the mailing list. <laughs> They're now 6,452 or whatever. I don't remember the numbers. So, 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 so. But yeah, so today I will be shipping Kubota-san's paper and blocks. And tomorrow I'll be shipping Chihara-san's paper and blocks for the next one. So we're up and running. And I'm, I'm doing the block repair today for, uh, for you know, Kubota. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know Kubota-san? Did you not know about that? No, but if you already talked about it in front of them, um, I, you don't need to repeat it, maybe. Again, I can no, ask whatever. you later. Kabuto-san, somehow, he damaged the block. And we really don't know how. He phoned and, and apologized. And luckily, it was after he finished the batch of prints. Not before he finished the batch of prints. How, how we happen? don't know, because it's... The, the, the common block damage is, you know, you know, a piece of block gets dinged. So there's a little... a ding on the block. Yeah. But this wasn't. There was a kind of big hole in the block. And we sure were all thinking, said. I don't know how he did it. So, well, while we're talking today about all our printers screwing up, so I'm sorry, this is not the kind of conversation we want to have too much. But, uh, I don't know. I really, really, really don't know. Maybe when he was, the only guess I have is like sharp tool. He was at the kitchen sink washing it after he finished and maybe it was wet and slippery and he dropped That's it possible. and maybe there was a knife or something. I just, I really don't know because nothing else is dinged, just there was one deep slot. But anyway, we don't know. We, we talked about it before the other day. So uh, and now today we're just, uh, we're just finishing off fixing it. So. Okay, this mm -hmm. sounds like you are busy today as well. So. Yeah, I know, so I, I, I had my list yesterday and I, I actually, the ladies who were here, so I asked them to help me get through the list. And we started, and then there were so many customers yesterday. Not just so many customers. The, the sales were only like 200,000 yen or so. But so many people wanted to talk. Mm. So many. And I know, whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever, 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 whatever. Also, so. Hanami season is coming, so, well, maybe it's already here. Mm, 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 yeah, mm, we'll mm, be prepared. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I'll get busy with this. Yeah, thanks, man. Right. See, you. so I'll report to you with the Great Wave count later. And I do want to talk to you. There's an issue that came up on Friday with me and Teko-san, which we need a little meeting about. I can't talk on, on stream, right? But we have we have okay. another. Something that I know or something. No, that but I we have another. Okay. Big, big problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll talk to you at nine thirty. Okay. Bye. Thank you. As I was saying, it's a pull saw, so I'm going to cut here. I'm not sawing through this. I'm, it's a pull cut, let the saw out of the way, pull out of the way. <laughs> not doing any damage somewhere. fingers are in danger at that speed. I don't think my fingers are in danger. It's a tiny saw. I mean, it's, it's you know, please, please, please. We're not talking about uh, Why don't we pull one way? One, I mean, it, I don't want to put too much stress on that little piece of wood that's in there. And pushing it doesn't do any cutting. A Japanese saw cuts on the pull stroke and doesn't cut on the push stroke. And whatever, I remember back when I was in... Uh, woodworking grade 10 at Kelvin Kelvin High School in Winnipeg. Is it called Lord Kelvin High School in Winnipeg? I took woodwork and the old guy who taught us, he was so, so strict with both saws and with files about push strokes and pull strokes. For example, I, this is a Western file. So when you push something, it abrades. And he told us always, 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 you push, you lift and pull, you push, you lift and pull it back. And his idea, which I'm, I'm, I bought into, is when you push, you're cutting, but if you keep the pressure on when you pull back, you're, you're going to bend, you're going to damage those teeth. And the same thing here. We're cutting, it's backwards, we're cutting on the pull stroke. And if I push the saw forward now, it's rubbing the back of all of those teeth and slightly bending them over. So for me, Dave, I, the cut stroke, lift, cut stroke, lift, cut stroke. 
I think there's, a, there's people who really argue the opposite. You can take a file, they say, you can take a file and go back and forth, hearing it both ways. And I'm old-fashioned, no way, Jose. But I'm not going to, that's not a hill I want to die on. How time? 9.06. Can we do this in time? Maybe, 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 maybe. I'm not finished yet, of course. That thing now is still proud. It's not at the right level. That piece of wood is still sitting up. I put a piece of paper here to do that. So this wood now has the thickness. It's sticking up the thickness of the piece of paper. How are we going to get it down level? What tool could we possibly use to do this? We're going to use two tools. Step one, we're going to slice. That's a hard little piece of cherry. And somebody's got it. Who is it? Oh, no. Inkwell 5 has got this. We're going to use two tools. We're going to use the knife here, and then I'm going to use my nagara for the last step here. Sandpaper. My God, sandpaper. How would you keep the sandpaper away from the rest of the block? is not sharp enough. I've been using it to remove prints from their backing paper. Now, this is not sharp enough. I'm embarrassing myself here. Okay, in fact, I think what we need to do here, let's do this. Let's put this aside till the next stream. I don't need this block <laughs> for printing right now. We've already got a bunch of prints from this block. I don't need it for printing. So let's do this. Let me get back to this on the next stream. We'll take a rain check. We'll put this aside for a minute. I won't finish it off stream. I will hold it. And on Thursday, we will come back and do this. But before that, I need to spend 15, 20 minutes getting a nice edge on this blade. We've talked about that before, you know. I need the Kento really sharp for this kind of work. But I use the same tool for removing prints from their backing sheets. And if it's too sharp, I really get in trouble cutting prints. So this is a bit embarrassing, but it's not sharp enough right now. Let me get back to this. Let's finish this on Thursday. We'll jump ahead for a few minutes onto show and tell instead. And I'll tell you, okay, let's do both then. Let's do the sharpening and the cutting because we don't talk about sharpening. You've probably never seen me sharpen this. So let's make a date. Let's do that. Let's save that job for the Thursday stream in a few days. Do we have a date? Fair enough? Fair enough. Show and tell. Now, we've got part three of that 
book set, that print set, but instead of doing that, I'm going to punt that one to Thursday as well, because <coughs> there's a package arrived yesterday for our flea market that Wat nabi is going to take upstairs today, and it's my chance today to have a peek at it, to have a look at it. Let me do the same thing. Let me get my flask out of the way, and we'll open a new package. Okay, now there's good news and bad news. It's mostly good news, but there's a tiny bit of bad news. For the unopening here, we don't have the box. The staff, when this came in on Saturday or Sunday, people didn't know it was going to be held for show and tell, and somebody opened it already. They took the box off and threw it away. I don't think it had green tape, I don't know. So stage one of opening this out of the box and open has already been done. So if you're going to handicap this, layer one is already gone. Now, time, time, time. We're okay, 9, 12. We're all right. We're all right. We're all right. Inside here are some of the most glorious prints that have ever been made in Japan. Quote me. What we have here is a set of prints published by the Adachi Company. And I think it's 1971. I'm not quite sure because they did the same prints for quite some time. This will be the era at Adachi when they were not at their peak, but they were still pretty good. And this is the era just before Kubota-san joined them. Uh, he may have already joined them by then, but he wasn't getting his name on the prints. So we're going to see some prints in here with the craftsman's name on them, but Kubota-san's name will not be there. Layer one, layer two. Ando Hiroshige Mei Mei Shu Mei. How do you pronounce it? Famous Works Collection Part Two. Now we're not going to be able to to uh, recycle this plastic, so it's just going to come off. So Adachi published a number of reproduction sets of Hiroshige's work, Hokusai's work, all these things. And they published the sets usually, for example, one of the ones we're going to see here today is the eight views of Omi, the Omi Hake, it's a set of eight. They published that by itself in its own slipcase. Then they published the set of such and such in its own slipcase and such and such. But they also, at one point in the early 70s, published this massive set, book one, which we don't have here today and book two, which we do have here today. And this is a slipcase which contains three of those other independently published sets. Let me pull them out here. Oi, oi, oi. Oh, this is heavy. So we have here three sets, which they of course sold separately anyway. This is the one I mentioned, Omihake. There's also, what do we have here? Toto Hake. Hake was a big deal back in the old days. And we have Toto, uh, nani, nani. Shiba, Shiba Hake. Eight views of the, like, the environments of the of, of Shiba area in the capital. The one I want to look at today is this, Omi Hake, because it is Adachi's top, top, top ever production. If these are in nice condition, if they're not foxed, and if the printers took some care, 
<clears throat> because not every single copy they produced was glorious. I have a set of this upstairs. <clears throat> Excuse me just a minute. <clears throat> Sorry. I have a set of these upstairs. They're also in our Moko Hong Kong collection. And they are the most among the most glorious prints I own. explanations and full English explanations as well. They really did the job. Omi Hake. Where are we? Oh, I was right. It's 1971. 1971. And we don't have Kubota's name here. <coughs> These are the carvers and printers. The carvers, of course, top carver for Adachi all through the 20th century, Ogura Hambe. No longer, but he's still there. We had Maeda-san, Nagashima-san, Ogura, and Matsuda-san, who also worked in Kyoto. In printers, we have the big, these are Adachi's big guns for all the years. Murata-san, he's considered a god. He's long, 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 long dead. He died before I came to Japan in, in the early 80s. He's one of the, the, for us who know about this stuff, these, these men of the pantheon, Murata-san, Hamano-san, Kijima-san, Nakata-san. The last two, I don't know. Incredible, incredible, incredible group of craftsmen. Why is this set so special? Okay, one reason. Among Hiroshige's work, it really is quite unique. He did lots and lots and lots of landscapes. These landscapes, compared to his, to his Tokaido and stuff like that, the, the Tokaido is full of people doing stuff. We see people walking and carrying and riding and doing all this kind of stuff. These Omi Hake landscapes are all about the landscape. I mean, there are boats and people in here, but they're not relevant at all to this. And what he did on this one was there's any number of places where we're making things with no relevance to the key block. It's not outlines with flat color. Nearly all the Tokaido prints and most of the other prints of this era, everything is outlined and there's flat color inside. This one is much more uh, what's the word? Impressionistic. And this is Japanese prints. And this is in the 18, oh my God, 1840s. What was the date this, these, were, these were published? Eighteen thirty-two, eighteen forty. Where's the date? Where's the date? Omihake. Whatever, 18, 1840, somewhere on there, the show. Oh, here we are, 1834, 1834. And this is completely, completely different from all the previous ukiyo-e stuff. This is impressionistic. And they are just so beautiful. And the printers here have done their job, the delicate work, the beautiful gradations. I mean, a yellow sky with a black gradation. I mean, what? If I describe this to you, before I opened it up, if I said, we're going to see something with a yellow sky and a black gradation, you'd be thinking like, what is this, Halloween or something? They're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And it looks like we've got a set here that's pretty nicely printed and with no foxing so far as I can see. We're going to go through this. This is going in our flea market and it's going to be expensive. Look at the quality of the gradation. Absolutely beautiful side-by-side, -side pinpoint registration, descending geese. This is magnificent. Current Adachi could not even remotely, remotely come close to this. It just all fades off into the distance. Just, just, this is to die for. Absolutely to die for. Again, look at it. Look at it. Just. The 
the best way to look at these prints, I've got them on my desk here at the moment, and as I sit here now looking at them, I've got the light over there coming in front of me, <laughs> and I can see the embossment from this cloud. Can I get, somehow get you guys to see that? I don't know. Let's see if I can try and zoom in on part of it, because you're not looking with the light. Okay, you can see it, right? Look, 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 look. The three-dimensional aspect to this. And when you see the light coming towards you, the gradations just blend beautifully. All the way down, right to the end. And they're very much a set. I don't know, anytime you see one of these prints, it's instantly recognizable for what it is. I mean, he's got the trope, the mountain with no outlines, with a gradation from the top. That's fine. You can call it a trope, whatever. But it works. It works. And the color choices. Yeah, I've talked about this sort of thing before, where the old designers, they handed in their sketch, they put it into the workshop, they took their money, and they're gone. And the workshop itself was more than capable of finishing it off. Now, for most typical ukiyo-e, that was true. But in a print like this, for a series like this, there's no way that could have happened. Hiroshige himself must have put in uh, the first outline parts of this. So let's go back to where are we for, for a second here. Okay, just for, for a... Where's, where's the more complicated? Okay, this one, you know. So he's, he's put in his sketch, which has got the, the boats and the men and the boats in the distance and this island. And okay, there it is. There's a partial outline for this mountain. Okay, they carve that block. Now what do they do? They have no idea. It's not a question of outlines and coloring and outlines and coloring. He must then have come back into the workshop at the point where they've got the key block finished, looked at a bunch of the proof, proof, prints taken from the key block, and he then must have sat with one of the printers saying, okay, here's what we're going to do. And he drew and sketched some kind of clouds and some kind of mountain. Because there's no way this information could have been transmitted through the key block. Look at this, the patchiness of the ocean. Was this all the printer's decision? I really don't want to think that. Printers were capable of making normal prints to a very high quality, but these are, these are something special. This series is something special. And I, I have no way to prove this or anything at all, but Dave would, would, would put his money on saying that this is an unusual set of prints and Hiroshige was in and out, in and out, in and out of the workshop all the time. Someone is asking Mudabori, wasted carving. Yes, of course, Mudabori could have been a lot of it. For example, though those clouds in the last one. It's possible, here, <clears throat> it's possible that Hiroshige could have drawn clouds and then somebody cut the outline for it and then made a color block for it. But that would have been an insane waste of time. The only way you really need mudabori is when, for example, you've got a, a horizon. Let's see, how can I accept You only need mudabori when there's two colors coming together. You've drawn your line, you carve your line, color block A is finished, color block B is finished, take your line away. But for that sky, that would be an insane waste of it. You don't need to draw it on your key block. Cut the key block first, then take one of the impressions and draw the clouds on one of the impressions. So you don't, have, uh, you don't need to do it on two. If the clouds had to be taken away from something and then added to something, you need those lines because it has to go on two blocks. But where it's just on one block, you don't need mudabori. And I'm sorry, a bit too technical. Some of you know what I'm talking about, some of you don't. I'm sorry. Anyway, I stand by my thesis. Hiroshige handed in the designs, which had key parts on it, and then he was back in the workshop, and back in the workshop, and back again to help get figured out what to do with these things. I mean, look at this. Mount Fuji in the background with a little tint of color. And I would bet absolutely that that wasn't an original concept, that that came when they were doing test printing. Udagawa san good morning, good morning, hello. This is Night Rain at Karasaki. Beautifully printed, 
rich deep blue perfect gradation this set is a winner an absolute oh no way the last one is foxed oh okay doesn't matter don't panic don't panic <clears throat> we're gonna swap she may have one now and if she doesn't we're gonna wait we're gonna hold this set till we get another set where something else is foxed and we will swap out there's no way i'm gonna ask her to break this up and put them into the shop one by one we're gonna wait we're gonna wait It's interesting too. Look at this. There's so many interesting things about this foxing. The foxing really is only present in white areas where there's no pigment. There's incipient foxing up here. Nothing down here. It's all in areas where there's no pigment. So something, somehow, it's been in contact with something. The pigment has acted as a protective agent for some of it. And places where there's no pigment we see foxing. I don't know the how, what, and why of it. Oh, I was having such a nice day, such a good day. This is the autumn moon print. And evening bell. I'm crushed. I'm crushed. It's okay. We can swap. We can swap out. So this will not be in our flea market like next week, unless she already has one that she's holding that she can swap out with. But we're going to hold. Absolutely. You can see the three-dimensional, it's just palpable when you get the good light coming to this side. The areas where there's no color carry the original paper thickness and the areas that have been printed have been pressed flat. So we have a palpable three-dimensionality here. This is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. The choice of colors here, the, to get them mixed together, just, this is, this is just, just whatever. I don't even have words to describe this. Again, if I, if I didn't let you see this and if I described it, we have a green hill with an orange thing behind it, then a bit of gray in the background, and then some funny beige green colors. But they work, it all works together, almost all. I'm not quite sure about the green on here. I think if I were calling the shots on this print, I wouldn't have let that green pass. I don't think this green fits the palette of the print overall. But that's my taste. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. They're the kind of prints that you can just open up and just sit there and look at all day. There's no action, nothing is happening, but they're just so gloriously blended together and peaceful and calming. They're the kind of prints you could just watch all day long. Okay, so good news, bad news, whatever. <laughs> if one of them is foxed, I can't help it. So, <laughs> All right, I couldn't resist opening this one today because I just love this set of prints so much. It was studying and seeing these prints at first that was one of the things that really made me get interested in making woodbuck prints. And to see this again, to refresh my memory again to this today. Good luck. Okay, there are, Anna, somebody did it? Yes, 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 the set in my collection. Thank you very much, lost to words. Anna, thank you very much for the help there. We have high resolution images of a gloriously printed set of the same Adachi set in the collection. Somebody here has linked it, Lost for Words has linked it. 
okay thank you very much reminding again i'll be here thursday we'll do some various work i'll be here saturday next monday i won't be here if you're a monday only viewer of this stream book off next monday i will be in hospital for a two day long all body dry dock checkup yeah, I'll be going to so Monday and Tuesday, I'm in. So Monday stream, I won't be here. So there's no way I'm going to stream from a hospital room. <laughs> so, okay, see you on Thursday. Thank you very much. And I got a ton of work to do here. Thank you very much. Let's put up the outside camera before we shut off. Huh? What's the giggle? No, I thought that you were talking to us. No, I was, uh, yeah, yeah, so okay, so okay, so okay, so okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, guys, thank you. See you on Thursday. Counter down. Three, two, one, see you later. Thank you again.